friends. Uh, let's start uh, the discussion on the subjects. Uh, here I'm going to give you uh, a simple approach to understand servlet. Uh, as a matter of fact, the students, those are new to servlet, have already gone through concept of applet. So let us start with the how the both things are different. So they are uh, servlet and applets are different on six different aspects. If you look at the execution way method of applet, the applets are executed on the client side. Uh, servlets specifically executed onto the server side. Now, if you look at the packages that are coming into action, as far as applets are concerned, they are java.applet.star library as well as java.awt that is upstart into input library that we have. Now, as far as servlets are concerned, we need javax.servlet and java.servlet.http. Java These two packages we are in need of. As far as life cycle of so, applet is concerned, it is uh, containing five methods. Uh, that is important method for applet that is init, stop, pend, start, and destroy. Whereas uh, for understanding servlet, the life cycle method in, contains three important points. One is init, service, and destroy. Uh, as far as user interfaces are concerned, uh, for execution of applet, user interfaces is required uh, to be developed and that can be done using upstart window toolkit or swing. As far as servlet is concerned, no such interfaces are required. Uh, it happily go with the waveform that you design uh, using uh, HTML or using VSP. It will happily get integrated with that. As far as bandwidth is concerned, uh, <coughs> applet requires more bandwidth for execution uh, as compared to servlet. So it, it means that servlet requires lesser bandwidth. As far as the security is concerned, applets are more prone to the risk of the uh, risk uh, as execution on the client machine, whereas servlet is more secure as execution in the, uh, the security. So, uh, so it means that servlet is more safer to execute and it can execute on the uh, server side too. Now, if you look at closer look of the servlet, you will find that servlets are being, uh, are being the programs, program that runs on the web or particularly onto the application server. It takes the data from the browser where the user works or it can it may take data from an HTTP client. If you look at here, you will find that the browsers are providing uh, data to the application server, and application server manages that data, and if required, it will be stored into the uh, backend databases. So in short, it takes the inputs from the web forms and it creates the pages dynamically. So if you take a very close look at the uh, the life cycle of the servlet will find that it contains five important steps. So whenever the servlet container uh, is being executed, so the first step is it loads the servlet class. Then it creates the instance of the servlet class. Then step number three, it initializes the servlet using INIP method, init method, which the same same sort of method, likewise method you have seen in the applet also, it initializes the required uh, variables that are needed for the execution. So it init is for that initialization method. Then there comes a service method. So the it calls the service initialization. After initialization, it calls the servlet uh, service method to uh, respond to the client by two ways uh, request and response these two ways are there then uh, it destroys you know, the servlet get destroyed by using a destroy method now important is the step number one two and three they are executed at once whereas step number four that is service executed at multiple why it is multiple time? We'll take a close look into the next slide. 
and step number five destroy executed at once only now let us try to have a closer look you will find that in closer look you will find that you have a browser browser where user works and it submits the data uh, as a request to the application server application server works on that request and provides the response so here request and response are two important uh, mechanisms that you have to take care the same request and response we have utilized into java server pages also so whenever the servlet container gets loaded the web application loads the servlet class it gets initialization right so here in init you find one two three returns that is step number one is loading instance making an instance and initializing the uh, variable that are required now service service takes the data uh, as a request and provides the response so whenever you see that the service is going with the response or providing a response means it is dynamically affecting the content of the user it is being done this the request is being handled by two means one is called do post and do get so in the next subsequent slide we'll see what is do post means and what do get means usually the servlet ends with the destroy so it unloads the uh, servlet container uh, uh, the time it gets unloaded it gets destroyed now you need to understand the package that are required for execution the package that are required for execution is java x dot servlet dot html so this is what you need to do and with the classes as far as classes under http packages uh, http servlet request and http servlet response now as a matter of fact what exactly do post and do get method works with respect to those service point is this that there is a clear distinction you need to understand and this is this has this is correlated with the nature of submission of the forms because servlet is handling the data submitted by the user so there are in order to handle this data there are two ways first is do get and second is do post so the as you understand as you already know that the form has two methods one is post method and the get method so do get method works uh, with the form get do post works with when the form has a method post now if you look at here you will find that do get request sends to a request parameter as a query string whereas if you use do post it sends the request parameter as a part of http request so one is by query string and one is by the request query now next is the get method is visible to everyone the parameters are disclosed on to the url whereas if you use do post method the variables are not being displayed in the url that almost uh, absolutely there is no uh, revealing of the content that is important now as far as restriction is concerned uh, you have uh, in case of do get method you have restriction on the form data you have to go with only ascii characters but this restriction is not there with respect to do post no restriction on the data even if you need you can go with file data or server data now next point is do get method the maximum size uh, method have maximum size that is 2000 characters but in case of do post method the component extended up to 8000 so since there is a restriction on the form url length is also being restricted but there is no restriction to number of form data the do get method the disadvantage particular with do get method the time the form data is being submitted it remains into the browser history but the time you use do post method it never remains into the browser history now as a summarized part part that we have to understand what we have learned so far is we have seen the life cycle of the servlet we have seen uh, the difference between the started with the uh, after and servlet cycle we have seen what exactly servlet is then 
uh, life cycle of the survey, then we have taken the closer look of the survey. We have identified how the data will be posed where they are different. Now, in my next subsequent video, I will let you know, uh, I'll provide you an information about the platform, about writing, creating a survey. So, uh, do watch my next video. Uh, if you like it, then click on the bell icon as well as subscribe. Press for more update. Thank you.